This is a drip feed radiant oil heater undergoing a draft test before modifications were introduced to make oil heaters safe. In Britain today, all sorts of things are tested, even how the sausage cooks. How much brushing will a carpet take? How much strain can knitted fabric stand? Some tennis balls wear out faster than others. A washing machine lined with sandpaper tests the strength of their covers. Of course, the only way to see if matches strike is to strike them. How would you think toothbrushes are tested? Obvious, isn't it? Furniture sometimes has to bear a heavy burden. The British Standards Mark shows it's been tested by them and proves strong and hard wearing. Before any goods can qualify for the kite mark, as it's called, they have to stand up to pretty rough usage. This is what a 16 stone man could do to a chair. In this way, years of use are given to furniture in a few hours. Chairs get 600 bonks at 20 bonks a minute and pass the test only if at the end of it the springs are still springy, the joints still rigid and the fabric firm. Carpets are probably the most downtrodden of all household textiles and some get downtrodden quicker than others. To find out how much they'll stand before they wear through, this electric ray apparatus counts the times the carpet is stepped on. A cheap carpet may wear out after only 44,000 treads. A good one will last for half a million footsteps. Nothing takes a beating like a pair of shorts on a small boy. But how much they'll take depends on the quality of the material. Machines can be just as rough as small boys and get the same results just as soon. Every two months, the British Standards Institution publishes the results of tests like this in its shopper's guide. And each year, it deals with more than 4,000 complaints about shoddy goods. This is an abrasion machine. A pair of shorts made of good quality fabric will stand 100,000 rubs before going into holes. It's warmer in bed for many people these days. But there are all sorts of electric blankets. This is one of the many safety tests those blankets undergo. Each blanket is rumpled and pulled 4,000 times in four different directions. How efficient is a motorcyclist's crash helmet? This is the place where they find out. Samples of crash helmets of all kinds are tested in this laboratory at Hemel Hempstead. 900 every month. First, they are carefully examined and then purposely weakened in heat, cold and water for long periods. Many tests follow, including shock and deflection. The chin strap is tested for strength. This is the penetration test. When you go on a train journey, you may be much more comfortable than your luggage. It may be having to endure this. To see how long it can stand it, this machine shakes it for 30 minutes, treatment equivalent to 500 miles in the train. He's being careful with someone's luggage, but they're not all like that. Some suitcases get this sort of treatment, and even if the porters don't throw them about, the shunting of the train probably will. Cases have been known to fall downstairs on their travels. This revolving drum finds out what effect it has on them. And on a rainy day, they'll probably have to put up with this sort of thing as well. When it comes to testing waterproof clothes, the laboratories of the Retail Trading Standards Association take over. Here, four pieces of proofed fabric are subjected to the same amount of water, and the water collected in the containers afterwards shows how well proof they are. Many of the machines at these laboratories are designed to test the strength and endurance of fabrics. This machine gauges exactly how much strain a piece of material will stand.
and the things you eat are tested too. Ever try to spread unspreadable margarine? At the laboratories of the British Food Manufacturing Industries Research Association at Leatherhead, they've invented a machine for finding out at what consistency margarine spreads best. It should come out of the machine smoothly and quickly, and the pen should stay in a straight line on the graph. These machines are invaluable to margarine manufacturers. Have you ever wondered why some sweets have too much chocolate on them and some too little? It's because the consistency of the chocolate is wrong. And this apparatus tests the thickness of liquid chocolate. She's probably wondering how long her mixture will take to thicken. And so did the Consumers Association, an independent body who, in their monthly journal, Which, publish results of tests of all kinds on consumer goods, about 50 of them a year. The best ballpoint pens give no trouble. This little machine really puts them through their paces and finds out which of them smudges and how long before the ink runs dry. The next test they have to pass is this one. You need to be a pretty strong-minded ballpoint to stand up to a lot of this sort of thing. And then there's the user test for barrier creams. The best ingredients for this one are four pretty girls and four bowls of really mucky stuff. Here's the coal and the garden dirt. Is there anything stickier than blackcurrant jam? Well, there's always some oil from the car. The next stage is to wash it all off and see what your hands look like afterwards. Serving the public interest is the Weights and Measures Department of the local authority. This is one of the depots of the Middlesex County Council. One of the many testing and measuring duties that the Weights and Measures Department carry out is checking retailers' scales to make sure they're accurate. Pound of steak, please. But she's not just an ordinary housewife. Round the corner is that car again. And in the boot, a special set of scales to make sure she's been given full weight. Milk comes under the department's eye, too. The inspector first goes to a distributing depot and takes samples of the milk. Then, if the sample is deficient in fat or contains water, he visits the farm where the milk came from and makes further tests. A plain van like this is quite a familiar sight to a coal man. He knows it's the weights and measures department making sure his sacks contain full weight. And after he's delivered the coal, the empty sacks are weighed and their weight subtracted from their full load just to make sure. Yes, making sure you get a fair deal is a full-time job for quite a lot of people these days. 